Hi everybody, welcome to Get Ready With Me, Louise. I decided to take my time today with my makeup. I had nothing else to do with laundry dishes, but technically nothing else. So I really was like, what do I want to do? And I thought, I really want to play with my Pat McGrath Christmas from last year. I think that's what I'm going to do, is start to play with some of the stuff we got last year at Christmas time to see what the brands might be bringing out this year, one. Two, will they change it? Will they learn? Probably not. Because as we know, Charlotte Tilbury is releasing a nine pan palette like she did the year last year. I thought the palette was fine. You know, I I it's good. You know, would I suggest anybody else to buy it? Probably not. I mean, if you like the color store, you might like it, but it's nothing like wowing, you know what I mean? And I also said that I much, much preferred her longer palettes. And did she go back? No. And I think that was the overall, from what I understood and heard, a lot of people love the longer palettes, not the nine pan. So, Hourglass, they listened. They were tired of the same old stuff every year, every year, right? What did they do? They created all different kinds you can get. You know, and then everybody loved the animal prints. And what did they do the following year? Brought it back with different animal prints. Smart. These brands get smart. Sometimes they don't. For an example, let's play with Pat McGrath today. I don't mind her big palettes that she launched at Christmas. I think it's a good way. Here's the thing. There's either two ways you're going to do this. You're going to do this as in this is your launch. You know, this is a whole new thing, whole new palette type of thing. Or you're going to give it like a a new customer base type of experience, you know. is how Christmas is. Like with Too Faced, they always come out with those Christmas packs. Tarts the same way, Christmas packs. Then they usually have a palette. You know what I mean? So, they get their regular customers, but then they get people coming in that might be giving it as a gift, stuff like that. And Pat McGrath, she just gives us, well, I mean, she gives us stuff, but you get my point. So, today we're going to be playing with that. The one I picked for today was called The Mothership Jewel Temptation. And it, first off, Okay, the packaging isn't that bad, but it's not that great either. I will say I do like the fact that it does stay open. This will keep this open, you know, so I do like this. This is one we're going to be playing with. I do like it is slim, so it is nicely stack, stackable and stuff. Like, there are things I like about this. And it is different, so I like that about it. I don't know if I necessarily, like, the color stories in the way of because I own everything but in the way of a new customer this would be nice the blushes I like the fact she added to a new blush and a you know reoccurring one, one that's already in the collection like Paradise Venus is in the collection already I have it Desert Amber is not so I do like that fact of it you know but let's get to what's on my face. So for today, I know, I used a primer. I know. Told you I was playing. I used the uh, Tatcha, the liquid silk canvas, the pump one, for primer. And I just, like, kept it, like, here and then on my wrinkles. Did it do anything? Not really. To be honest, not really. But I do like the feeling of it, the smell, the texture. Like, I like all that about it. But do I really think it's doing anything? Not really. I like it. But I don't think it does anything. <laughs> okay? Um, so take that as a grain of salt. Um, for foundation, I've been stuck on this Infallible Pro Glow. I think I'm going to have to go get another one, y'all. I'm almost out of it. But for concealer today... I used a different concealer. What did I use? Oh, I found my new stick. I finally found it. So I used my new stick concealer. I love this concealer. I don't know why, but I do. I set the T-zone and under eyes with my Prism Libre, the old version. 
I am glad I did get my hands on that. I do like it. I do. But I don't think it's the end all be all either. So keep that in mind. I know they have switched it to a worse formula, which, you know, that sucks for them. But I don't think that was the end all be all powder to begin with. So keep that in mind. I set the rest of my face with my Too Faced Peach Perfect. Now there's one that Too Faced could bring back out. Even if it's just a limited edition, I think they should, they just discontinued the peach palette two years ago maybe? Was it two? So if they wait another three years, I hope they bring back that whole peach line. I think it'd be smart. But anyway. For the bronzer, I'm wearing Pat McGrath bronzer in Desert Glow. Yes. So, this is the bronzer I'm wearing, Desert Glow. And then the highlighter is Golden Nectar. The blush is from Out of the Palette, and I went with Desert Amber which is the top one here. And I kind of like it. Like, I don't think these palettes are bad. I really don't. Uh, for the uh, waterline, I'm using the White Tarte Fake Awake Liner. For lips, I'm wearing MAC Whirl Lip Liner and Lipstick. And that's everything. Nail Polish, I think I'm going to have to go buy another one of these. This one is Low. It is Tea Time. Yeah. The LA Colors Tea Time. Loving that. Alright. So, like I said, I like these things. Do I think they're something you have to run out and buy? No. I do think that if you like it, sure. But if it's not up your alley, you're not missing much. Okay? There's no special shades in here. There's not a, like, a unique color story in here. Okay? So, you have nothing to fear there. But let's go ahead and get started. So, the first shade we're going to go into is this one right here. To get started I will say though like I do love Pat McGrath bronzers and blushes I do I think they're easy to work with they are pigmented their colors are beautiful like I love everything about them I really really do so for me like I like these types of things and especially now with work I am all for in all in one palette okay we've seen that lately i have been grabbing for my benefit uh palettes my um clinique my what other one was there i've just been grabbing for palette but i see the clinique there the Natasha Denona one that's got the contour blush and stuff in it. The MAC thing that's in here, that MAC palette. Like, I've been grabbing for things like that. That have, like, everything in there so that it just makes it easy on me. Because I really, you know, and, and, and I'll get better at it. I'm just now getting back to work. But I'll get better at, like, what I'm doing and maybe plan ahead. And again, I'm not working that much. So... It's not that big of a deal, to be fair, but yeah, I, uh, I don't know. But I do like this palette in particular because it does have, the other one was more unique compared to like what she usually has in her line. But this one I liked because it's just more every day. If you really want to like step it up, you can with the, like they've got the dark, but they've also got the lighter lid shades for it to be every day. So I do like this palette. I think the blushes go, she took the blushes for both palettes really 
go well together with the colors that are chosen. Like, I think it all makes sense. Like, it's not like it's bad at, by any means. It's just, I don't know. I think we, I, I, or anybody, really expects a lot. I don't know what we expect. I guess a wow, a head turner type of thing when it comes to Pat McGrath because she is just so freaking fascinating and phenomenal at what she does. It's like, is she even involved anymore in this, you know? Or are other people making decisions? Because, like, I just... When you look at her makeup looks, you just have to go, my goodness, the, her, she must have one heck of a brain to create what she creates, right? And I do understand that hers is more, like... Her palettes are... Some are every day. You could use them every day. You could. But most are more like events, special occasion, a party, you know, stuff like that. Where Natasha Denona, I feel like she really hones in on the everyday work mom or even work woman or man uh, type of vibe. Like easy to use. You're not really like, there's not much brain processing thought processing to go along with her palettes you know any way you go you kind of can create a look type of thing the formula is nice it, she gives you different formulas almost every single time she improves on the formulas that you know people give feedback on and I just I, I love that brand too but I also on the flip side, where she's giving you different things, I kind of get it. And then Pat McGrath, most people will say that I hear. I like her eyeshadows. I like the formulas. I like this. I like that. But it ain't worth the price point when it comes to her eyeshadows. And I agree. I agree to a certain extent. I do think that if she could bring back them special shades and create a mothership palette that nobody that's not like she's already got i think she could come back i truly wholeheartedly do did i say what color i was going into i was going into this one so i went into this one now i'm going into this one we're also going to take it under the water line or lash line um but because i don't think it's necessarily falling off by no means her brand I just think that people are getting a little tired of the same old, same old. And I, I am. I'll be the first to admit it. I am. But will I continue to buy? Yes. Yes, I will. There's not much I won't buy from either one of these brands. You know, it's just not going to happen. And to be fair, Pat is really got the Pat McGrath brand. I mean, it's really, you know, well-rounded from formula to formula to what she has offered. I mean, you can almost, no, you could, no, you can almost do a full face. Now, you could technically do a full face. She doesn't have brow product, but technically you could use a shadow for that but other, I mean she's got concealer foundation and both are good she has primer that I don't know I mean it's not bad but it you know I have it but it's not the best either um and it's definitely not worth the price point because the packaging sucks uh but um She has the setting powder, the under eye. She's got the full face setting powders. Um, lip liner, lipstick, lip gloss. Uh, she's got cream blushes. Well, stick, you know what I mean. Uh, she's got powder blushes. She's got powder bronzers. She's got the highlighters, again, in stick and in powder. I guess she doesn't have any liquid highlighter, bronzer, or blush. She doesn't have any cream bronzers that I know of pretty sure she don't and she has mascaras and eyeliners 
So, I mean, it is kind of a well-rounded, you know, you get a little bit of whatever you're looking for with that brand, with the exceptions of a little bit of things not in. But I am curious to know what this year's, like, what she launching for Christmas this year. Because, like, I've got my eye set, because I want it. We all know I do. I won't miss a launch from her or Natasha. Generally, I won't miss Tarte or Too Faced. I'm thinking about maybe skipping the, like, the gift set part of it. But if they release an actual palette, I might get it. But I don't know. Again, I might get it all. Who knows? I guess better work more hours, huh? <laughs> but, I don't know. I'm just, I'm... Because I, 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 like, this kind of reminds me of Bridgerton, but she hasn't done anything with Bridgerton in a while. So I'm kind of curious on what it might be this year, to be fair. And again, does this create a beautiful look? Yes! All right, we're going to go into this beautiful purple shade. And I love this shade. It, okay, so first off, be careful. You could get fallout, okay? That's number one. But you could do it very lightly, okay? And like pat it around. And it'd almost be like a light purple veil of a color, right? Like it does have a base, but if you lightly put it on, you don't have to really, you won't see the impact. And I should have used her artistry wand and I didn't, but that's okay. Okay, so I dipped it in once and I applied it very easily. Let me get my mirror. Where's my mirror? What did I do with my mirror? Does anybody know what I did with my, oh, there you are. It was hiding, as always. Okay. So, as you can see, I barely, like, tapped into that to pick it up, and I kind of just smeared it around the eye. Not really, like, patting it in or anything like that. I'll go back in, though. Hold on. I just want you to see the difference in a way, because, like, if you pat it in, like, right now you're seeing the purple and a little bit of the pink, but if you really pat it, like, that pink starts to pop through, like, the pinky purple shade because there is sparkles in it and it's beautiful stunning gorgeous let me I kind of made put that on a little messy let me clean that up just a tad here because I don't want it like all over the place I don't I want it to stay controlled And I don't get fallout from those uh, sparkles through the day either, no matter what I use. Like, I don't, I don't have that problem. If you do, I would suggest just laying a primer down. Now I'm going to pat this shade on, and you're really going to see that pink being able to pop through. Again, very easily, though, because I don't want fallout. And I'm trying to get it close to the lash line, but not like on it because it'll get in my lashes and go everywhere. 9 out of 10, that's how the fallout happens for me. It gets in my lashes and then I don't, it just, I lose control of it. Okay, so you can see how now that pink is really popping. You can see it as the light hits it. Y'all, it's a stunning shade. Like, I can't tell you how much I love this shade. Just because it can do different things. Technically, you could use it as like, um, what was it? That Tati had it in her palette. Is it a sparkle shade? Is that what she called it? Shimmer? No. Glit no. Uh, it's the one with the little glitter things in it. Those. Those shades. That, that's kind of like this. A little different, though. A little different. But you can use this in the crease, and it'll come out more like a purple matte because those glitter thingies kind of, like, disappear somewhere. I don't know where they go. I still haven't figured out where they go. But they don't go on my face, so they must just go 
into the air and then land somewhere probably on my clothes or you know whatever that's how I get glitter everywhere but you get my point that can that you could the same with this shade here could be used all right we're going to go into this shade right here and pick it up and I'm going to pop that right on the inner corner but be very easy because you will get pulled out again with this shade so you really want to tap that in or use some sort of something just so you know because I don't want you to get fallout if you do your makeup first like I do because 9 out of 10 I well 10 out of 10 really I do my makeup before I do my eyes I think I have tried it a couple of times the other way I just don't like it it doesn't set right with me I don't know why is it goofy? Probably. But is it something I just do? Yep. And I think that shade there it is more of a peachy pink shade, but it goes really good with that because of the pink in that purple. That's why I said this palette has so many options that you could do that it's really kind of nice. Alright, so I think we're good so far. Alright, now we're going to go into that dark shade right here that I used already in the outer corner and lash line. Except now I'm going to go in with a liner brush, my favorite, Refer 29. And we're going to pack that really good on that lash line. That way that color really, really pops because it's condensed, you know, it's a smaller brush. I'm rethinking the fact that I did use the white liner in this look. I don't think I should have went that route, to be fair. I don't think the look looks bad, but I think that if I would have chose a different liner, it would have looked better. And we're going to line the top lash line now. You know what else I think that maybe wouldn't hurt? Is if these palettes were magnetic. That way people could redo them, recreate them, use the shadows how they want to, you know what I mean? Same with the blushes and bronzers because I would easily take one of these with me if I could pop out one of those blushes, say, and put in like my bronzer. But unfortunately, yeah, they're not magnetic. I was just checking. I was like, am I? With I, I could have been mistaken, you know. Knowing me, I could make mistakes, you know. So I was checking to make sure they weren't magnetic. They're not. And then we're gonna. Blend along that lash line again. But to be fair, I really like the way the whole makeup turned out today. I was, I mean, not that I'm not impressed when I'm using these shadows because obviously I love this brand so I know how it performs. But. I will say it turned out much better than I even thought it would. And like I said, I did get a little bit of fallout with the shade because you do have to be careful with her shades, a lot of them, or you will get fallout. But again, I know this, I just don't care, and you may not care either. It's a little glitter hurt. They'll sparkle to your life, a little more added sparkle, even in places you didn't want it, you know, what's it going to hurt? Okay, then for mascara, again, she does have her mascara. I do like the Dark Star mascara. I do like that. But for today's look, I'm going to use Hourglass Unlocked. I'm trying it out again. See how I feel about it. 
because I'm generally curious on how I feel about it, to be fair. I forget, you know? And I want to save the transfers through the day. That's my biggest thing. I just want to save the transfers. Because I'm putting it on a list. And then I'm making a list of mascaras. Because now that I'm working, everything isn't the way it seems to be. I'm just saying. And you all know I love my Armani mascara. I do. I think it makes my lashes look beautiful. And I've never once had a problem. Not once. Until I did. Now, why did I already have a problem? I have no clue. Was it something I wore on my lids? I don't know. But it transferred. And it was bad. And I don't know what happened. I really don't. So, luckily, I do remember what I was wearing that day that it did that. So, I am looking into, was it something I did? Or, you know, did I not powder? Like, I'm trying to figure that out. But it did transfer on me, finally. And that just, is it was shocking to me. Because never once have I had to do that. So I'm seeing how the hourglass is going to wear. And I do like the way it does my lashes too. I won't lie. I like the look of them. So you know, if it can... I just need to have as many mascara options as possible just to be safe. Plus, I... Uh, a, don't want to be repurchasing stuff that isn't going to work for me anymore, for whatever the reason. And I want to let you all know, too, because obviously something went very wrong. Something's going wrong now. This is really taking. This ain't looking nothing like my other eye. So, I don't know what's going on here. And I only put one coat in one coat. I don't think this builds well on itself is the thing. I probably should have stopped. Ooh. Yeah, I can feel it. This does not build well on top of itself. Alright, so that's where the mistake happened. I just put too much. I kept going too much. So, note it. Great. And I can't wear... Oh, that was the thing. I don't like waterproof mascara because I just find it too hard to get off. Can I get it off? Yes. Can I get it off fairly? Yeah, but I don't want to take the time at night to try to do that. I'm just... I just don't want to. You know? I'm busy. I just want to get to bed. Nine out of ten, I just want to go to bed. Alright. I think I hit somewhere. I don't know where I hit, but we'll clean it up. For the bottom lashes, we're going to go into the Lancome Death and Seals. Okay, this eye is just having a time. I don't get it. I had no problem at all with this eye doing it. Now I gotta even them out. Like, this eye looked really good. And then, I don't know what happened to this eye. This eye just decided to go bonkers, I guess. Who knows? Oh, 
clean up the mess. There's something going on. You know what? I think I know what I've done. I applied the water line after I did my mascara because I forgot my stuff. The, um, liner, maybe that got in the lashes. Like, that's the only thing I can think of. Because why else is it doing this? It's never... done this before. I think somehow the eyeliner matted it together my lashes. Alright. Anyway, I got them fixed out now, I think. I'm going to clean this off so that I can then I need to get some single spoolies I need to order them off of Amazon somebody said you can get like a thousand of them so cheap so I'm going to look into that because I'm so scared I'm going to break this one because it just came in some sort of eye gel I don't know but it works really good I like it or eyebrow that's what it was eyebrow gel clear eyebrow gel and I like it but I know I'm going to break it. I break most of them like that, trying to clean them, because I should just take them in there and clean them, but I never do. And then I sit down, and I'm like, oh, that's dirty. I need to wipe that down. Alright, here we go. Alright, we're good. So, yeah. I understand. I do. Where people are coming from when they're like, it's not worth the price point. As far as the eyeshadow, I get it. Because you're not just paying for the eyeshadow, you know, you're paying for the packaging, the name, all that stuff. So I do understand it. But it is still pretty. It is still a nice formula, nonetheless. And I actually, I love it. But I do see where other people are coming from. Like, I do see that. So, again, I can see how opinions can, can differ. I don't think people lie about, you know, saying they love it because, you know, they don't have a problem paying that price tag. And when they say that it's their favorite, again, it could be everything that makes it their favorite. Not just the formula, but the packaging and the iconicness behind Pat McGrath, you know? So I do see where, because I used to think, oh, people have to be lying. This is not a good formula, not for this, just something else. But it's not. It, it is based on preference. It's based on their their price point. It's based on their packaging wants and needs. It's based. It's just based on their opinion, basically. Nobody is going to universally say, it, at least not that I know of, this is the best period because there's always going to be a a but because it just is you know so do keep that in mind when you're looking at these products and these brands because yes they are good and I don't think you're going to find a bad to be honest anymore because the formulas are just they've changed you know even drugstore so I don't think you'll necessarily find a bad ever but, again, it doesn't mean the higher price tag means it's so much better. By no means. And it doesn't mean that the least expensive isn't, you know, good or bad either. So, keep, just keep it all in mind. And everybody's preferences are different. But I don't think anybody is actually lying to, you know, anything like that. Because I did used to think that. I'm not, you know, I did. Because I just couldn't understand it. And now I see. 
And yes, there are still some palettes out there that you just go, what is this? I'm not, you know, sure. But at the end of the day, it's up to you. You have to do what's best for you and your spending. But it's still a pretty look. It's almost giving me like gothy vibes. Vampire. In a way. But yet not too deep and dark to where I'm not comfortable. Like the melt palettes can get. They scare me. The melt does, okay? This is definitely deeper and darker than I usually go. But it's not bad. Alright. I've rambled long enough and taken enough of your time. This, these are the kind of videos here where I should edit. So I don't waste your time. <laughs> but I'm, I just don't want anybody to not see how it performs because it could be error on my part it could be error on the shadows but there's no fancy cameras or editing so it's up to you to decide is it my fault is it the brand's fault is it the brush fault primer eyelid primer today is what did i use urban decay uh, Urban Decay, the anti-aging. I had to think about it for a second there. Alright, so I'll let you go. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts on what you think the Christmas is going to be like for Pat. I'm curious. What is she planning for this year? And I hope it's good. My fingers are crossed. I so hope. But, um, yeah. I got a feeling I'm going to be disappointed, but I'm praying, I'm praying... Alright, I'm going to let you go. Let me know your thoughts. If you like this video, if it helped in any way, if it was entertaining even, please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, or ring the bell, hit all. That way you're notified when I upload. I upload every day but Sunday. Fingers crossed. And I will see you in my next one. Until then, stay safe and stay healthy. Bye.